Hey guys, welcome back to part three of our little create tutorial. In part three, we're going to take our unwrapped model and bring it into Substance Painter where we're going to paint some textures on it. So this is a beginner tutorial. It's just going to be some very basic techniques. So let's uh, flip over to Substance Painter here and get started. So here's your window. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, Substance Painter. And the first thing we want to do is load in our FBX file that we exported from 3D Studio Max. So we're going to go file a new, a new project window. All we're going to go to is here where it says file. And we're going to navigate and we're going to find our FBX file. In my case, the low poly crate that we exported before. And we're just going to open that. Uh, we don't really need to touch anything else here, but what we're going to change is the document resolution. We're going to put this up at 2048. Basically, that's the size of the texture files that we're going to create. And the bigger they are, the more detailed they are. We can always shrink them down later, but it's better to start big uh, initially. So hit OK. And you see we've got two windows here. Uh, one on the left has the model itself. And the one on the right has our UVW map. You may remember this is what we unwrapped from our second part of the video series. So how do we start this off? Uh, let me see, what do we want to do first? I want to back out some texture maps before we actually start painting on our wood detail and stuff like that. In Substance Painter, we have to uh, back out some texture maps. So we're going to go over here to Texture Set Settings. And uh, if you don't see that, you just go to the uh, Window. Uh, where is it, actually? Yes. Texture set settings, use texture set settings. Uh, we'll go here. Uh, all the channels that we have here are what we can paint onto the create. We'll talk more about those later. We want to scroll down, and you'll see we have a lot of uh, empty slots here. And we're going to hit is just this little button that says back mesh maps, and this is going to automatically fill a lot of these slots for us. So again, output size of this, we're going to change this up to 2048. And again, we can shrink it down later on. Uh, we're going to click this little option, use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. And then we're just going to hit back uh, create material mesh maps. The reason why we did that little low poly as high poly, general way that we make uh, game assets is we have a low poly version that uh, is used in game and we'll create a high poly version which will uh, contain lots of little details. So in this case, we could have created a high poly version, which had the individual planks in it, we chips of wood, things like that. We uh, bits where uh, nails were maybe hammered in. That might have been uh, thousands and thousands of polygons to get all those wee details. And uh, we can't use such a high poly model in game. So what we do is we back that extra geometry detail into the textures that are applied on the, the low poly one. Uh, and that fills in on the normal map slot and a couple of lines at the ambient occlusion slot as well. So we didn't have a high poly one. This is just a simple beginner's tutorial, so we didn't go for a high poly one. We're keeping it very simple. But the main thing that this did add was the ambient occlusion. Now, ambient occlusion is sort of the wee bits of shadows that you would get between uh, corners where the light doesn't quite hit. As much so it adds just a little bit more depth a wee bit more realism so you'll see there compared to the start of the video this is a lot more clearly defined because there's some shadows being painted in there for us and the reason why we want to do that is because like most things in video games we are trying to simulate real life and real lighting conditions for as cheap as possible and it's cheaper to affect some of these shadows than it is to actually calculate them using uh, real-time lighting so every wee trick that we can get away with to make things run faster is what we do. And using the ambient occlusion map is one of them. But that's enough ranting on about that. Let's actually start painting this thing. So we've got our texture set settings. We're done with that. Uh, now I want to go over to my layers panel, which may be somewhere else on your list, wherever it is, that's fine. Uh, just bring up your layers panel. And what we're going to do is down here in the shelf, we have a load of pre-made materials. Now I'm not going to make anything too new uh, I'm just going to stick with the pre-made materials because this is just a beginner tutorial. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to all here and I'm going to type in wood. And we've got a couple of different materials. 
the pendant we want. This chestnut one here looks like it could be quite good. And I'm just going to drag and drop that onto my crate. And there we go. Already that's looking pretty not bad. And you can see the the benefits of our cutting our unwrap have come in nicely. Where we've got the horizontal and it meets here and then it looks like a separate plank of wood. Now the main issue that we have is that uh, the grain's going nicely along this little horizontal uh, plank here, but the grain seems to be going the wrong way along this plank and a few of the others. So we can fix that. What we want to do is we want to duplicate this. Uh, at the minute the grain's going horizontally. If we look here in our UV, the grain's going entirely horizontally the whole way across. And we want to duplicate this and rotate it and have another one where the grain's going vertically. And then just pick and choose which one gets which. Uh, just if we zoom in here on the UV, if you notice these lines, that's actually us seeing the, the ambient occlusion that we had it in before, those wee bits of shadows. Just if you're wondering what those are. Uh, so, okay, we're going to leave this horizontal one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask out certain parts of it. I'm going to take that little folder and inside this folder there's actually a lot of stuff that makes up that wood material. Now you can certainly make your own materials in here with all these different layers but the benefit of having these materials is that the, the hard work is already done for you. And likewise you can go online and download all kinds of materials that other people have pre-made. Some of them will be free, some of them you have to pay for etc. But what we want to do is add a mask to this layer. And we're going to click this little icon, add mask, and we're going to add a white mask. And the white mask is not going to make any obvious difference. But what a mask does is it reveals part of a layer and it hides part of a layer. And it does that by having this extra wee thumbnail here. And we're basically painting, uh, we're dictating by color what's visible and what's invisible. And what's white will be visible, and we put on a white mask and everything's visible. But if I was to start painting on this using a black brush, it hides uh, what's there. Only showing that plain, clear layer underneath. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to control Z, get rid of a few of those. And uh, I never actually mentioned, if this is your first time using Substitute and you want to navigate around here, use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Uh, right click, sorry, not right click. Uh, oh god, now that I'm now that I'm thinking about it, I can't remember how to do it. This is so strange. Oh my god, I've taken a brain fart. What is going on? There we go. Okay. Uh, sorry. Hold the Alt key and left click to rotate around the object, and the middle mouse button will sort of pan across the object. And uh, mouse wheel will zoom in and out. Well, that was weird. Once you actually, once you try and think about it, you can't remember how to do it. But anyway, uh, what am I trying to do? Yes. Uh, so these parts here, where it's horizontal, I don't want those uh, being shown in this mask. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this little option here, the polygon fill. This is basically your paint bucket in Substance Painter, and I'm going to select. Uh, I don't think mesh fill is what I want. I think I want a uh, UV chunk. At the minute, we're just set to polygon, and if I click this, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. First of all, sorry, just ignore this and just turn into black, first of all. If I click a single polygon, it will fill that whole polygon. But I want UV chunk fill. And what this does is every part of our mesh that has been cut into individual wee chunks, it will fill those entirely. So if I click that, it fills that entire wee chunk. If I click this one, it fills that entire chunk. Now you'll notice there, I changed the color of this and we're just going from black to white. White, uh, if you look very closely, you'll see this mask changing as I click uh, and you'll actually see the UV changing as well. When it's at white, it will reveal our color. And if we slide this all the way down to black, it will completely hide that layer. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to look across this and see what direction do I want these uh, planks to go. So all the vertical ones. Oh, and be careful. I just control Z there. 
if you happen to if you click drag say like that it will also do what's uh, behind so you don't want to do what's behind you always want to just do a single click very easy to uh, rotate around an object and then see that you've actually uh, clicked and dragged and uh, erased a part that you didn't want to erase so I'm trying to go through this quite fast so apologies if I'm going too fast but please just uh, re-watch uh, whatever you're seeing and uh, not understand it and just look for sort of what options have been selected and stuff so again I'm just selecting the uh, the individual planks and things that aren't the right way round I am also maybe going to select these big metal pieces they're going horizontally maybe these would work better if the grain was going vertically so just select each of these and the good thing is the you'll notice that the diagonal planks why is that not clicking there we go you notice that the diagonal planks they actually have the uh, the grain going the right way and that's because on the unwrap itself we made those horizontal we had them lined up nicely I've just noticed there I've left just a tiny wee gap here in the top that's annoying but oh well no one will ever see it uh, okay so what do I want to do here's a really quick way of fixing this I'm going to duplicate this whole folder so we right click I'm going to duplicate layers and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click and invert mask so everything that's black will be white and everything that's white will be black and if I do this suddenly it looks just like it did originally and we've made no change but here's what we're going to do I'm going to hide the one underneath and now you can see that we've got the inverse so one of them has all the bits that should be horizontal and this one have all the bits that should eventually be vertical and all we have to do is open up this folder and if we find a couple of the layers here the likes of this uh, fibers layer and we're just going to go to rotation and we're going to rotate it in 90 degrees so it's vertical instead of horizontal so here it is it's default at 90 I'm going to set it to zero and there we go we've got vertical uh, I've got to check these other layers there might be a few other ones that uh, need to be rotated as well and I'll just pull this up a wee bit it can be hard to see uh, maybe this one's okay actually grunge Wood fiber is two rotation. Let me see if I set this to 90. There's still something. Yes, yeah, this layer here. Set this to zero. This one does not want to. This one doesn't want to rotate, even though. It's rotating on the UV, it's not rotating on the model. That's very strange. Oh, I know why. I know exactly why. So here's something you have to be careful with. I think I'm rotating the... Uh... Actually, yes, here we are. Wood pattern. Am I rotating the wrong thing? Let me see. Runways, runways. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I've lost the rotate option. I'm getting about lost here. What's going on? Tributes. Not in there. I have completely lost the. The rotation. Why can I not see the rotation? Okay, I rotate you here. But that's not updating on the model. Why are you not updating on the model, you silly model? This is definitely the layer I want. We can see toggling it on and off does that. But rotating you seems to make 
absolutely no difference which makes no sense to me at all which why did I do that oh substance painter you're annoying me now substance painter stop it there we go No, I don't want to move you. There we go. This is very, very strange. What I might do, just for the sake of quickness, I'm just going to hide that all together. No, I don't want to do that. That's no good. Where have you gone? This layer should have just a... Hang on, I'm pausing this video. This is annoying me now. Okay, I'm just an idiot and I found what I'm looking for. Uh, we've got these two tabs here. Find is what we have. Uh, and just, I had collapsed the UV transformations. There we go. Uh, but yeah, rotation. There we are. That's what I was working on earlier. Why did it not rotate? Let me see. Zero. Why, why didn't that work? That's so strange. Why wasn't that rotating? But good news is we've got it sorted in the end. And uh, if we close this folder again, so we've got our horizontal, we've got our vertical, and we've turned them both on. Look at that. Absolutely delicious. Got a nice crate. Got nice vertical planks going in there. Uh, one thing we don't have, if we bring in super, super realistic, uh, we should be able to see the thickness of these planks along the top. But that's going into crazy and insane detail. That's for a more advanced tutorial. This is good enough for your average COD player running through shooting things. They're not going to notice wee details like that. This looks good enough. What I am going to do is just split this into planks. And make it look less like a big piece of plywood. Make it look more like planks. So how do I want to do that? I want to, I want to create a new layer. Just a new blank layer. And I am going to take my brush tool and in my properties of the paint, I'm going to scroll all the way down. Let me see if I can get a bit more room here in this. And make sure we're, we're on that correct layer. First of all, I'm going to bring this layer right to the very top outside of that folder. I'll we'll just collapse that folder up, keep this tidy. And we're going to call it uh, Plank Grooves. There we go. And what I'm going to do is scroll down here to the bottom in my properties. Uh, I don't, uh, these are the different channels. If we look back in texture set settings, uh, I showed you these channels base color, height, roughness, metallic, blah, blah, blah. These are all the ones we can paint onto our material. And what I want to do is just have uh, height and normal. We're not going to worry about roughness, we're not going to worry about color. Actually, we might keep color on. What I might do with color is I'll go for a nice dark, very dark brown color. Uh, and that'll just enhance. We'll go to paint in little shadows here, uh, even darker than that. That's maybe a bit too red. Almost black, just with a little tiny bit of color on there. That's, uh, yeah, that's looking good. Really, really dark, just off black color. Uh, what I want to do is I want to set the height negative. Uh, maybe all the way to minus one. Minus one might be too much, but what this will do is when I paint on, you'll see that it gives us this uh, this kind of uh, little, uh, what do you call it? it sort of sinks, uh, gives the impression of sinking into the wood. And if we do a nice narrow line, very small brush, that will uh, look like planks. So I'm going to just give us a good square view here. I'm going to hold control and scroll my mouse wheel and uh, scroll this down very small. But what I'm also going to do is you can see we've got a very soft edge brush here. In my brush properties, I'm going to set the hardness up quite high. And you see that gives me a much sharper edge. Maybe not 100% hard. Uh, let me see what else do you want. That's all good. Uh, so yes, I've got this. So now you can see we've got a nice harder edge there. But I'm going to hit control and mouse wheel just to make it a lot smaller. 
we pro tip if you're wanting to figure out how to do stuff if you hold control i'll show you all the way controls that control can do if you hold shift you'll get the same thing if you hold alt you'll get the same thing uh let me see so let's uh which one are we on here if i just squiggle on there uh, you can see it's in the uv perfect Control z so we go into my uv here and the good thing is with these being oriented nicely uh, if I just get a really small brush and if I click and hold the shift key, whoops, sorry, if I click and hold shift, we get this line and it lets us draw straight lines. So I want to get basically a vertical line here. If I hold control and shift at the same time, it'll give me a vertical line. And there you can see, we're getting that little groove in there, it looks like a plank. So what I'm going to do is click once, hold control, shift. Draw it down and just keep repeating that. Now, I'm not going to be too worried that these are completely in line. I'm noticing I'm getting a little thing here where they're not going right the way to the top. I'm not sure why Substance Painter does that. I don't have a graphics tablet, I'm just using the mouse, so these aren't entirely straight lines, but I'm just going to fill these in. Or even I can hold Shift and do that, and I'll fill it. Uh, maybe if I start from the bottom and work up. Odd. Now it's giving us the opposite. Maybe I'm just too close to the brush stroke there. You could, if you want, try and freehand these, and it might give you, pardon me, it might give you a more natural kind of line. But using a mouse, you can see you're not going to get it very smooth at all. So just use the uh, shift key there. Even if you don't use the uh, shift and control to get a fully straight line maybe you want a little bit of wonkiness in these might look quite nice there we go and just finish that one off there finish that one off i don't know why it does that we quirk it might be something to do with the size of the uv islands or whatever there we've got this looking like uh, planks now and that's quite good if we rotate around uh, if i hold shift and click with my right key we can move the light around the scene and you can see how that's now catching the light and that looks quite good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to do the rest to the other uh, side here just so you don't have to watch that. I'm just repeating the exact same process uh, and also do that to the top as well. So bear with me, I'll be right back. I appreciate we're running on for time here. Okay, welcome back. I've spent just a couple of minutes there. Uh, adding in the little plank lines, literally just the straight lines on that layer with the uh, height and you can see how that has uh, impact on the look of our create. It looks quite good and as I say if we hold shift and the uh, right mouse button we can see how the light is sort of collecting off those edges and it looks quite nice. Last wee thing that you could do as an option is uh, where your where your planks meet on your UVs. You could also draw down these lines, uh, and I've got to do it straight on the model this time again, just holding Shift, and you can see that gives you that kind of little uh, separation there. Uh, even if you want to be really specific, you could go all along the top here and just uh, mark out where all those planks are if you want it. That is maybe a little more detail than we need. But you certainly could do that if you, if you had the extra 10 or 15 minutes. You could put in all that extra detail. And maybe maybe once I finish this tutorial, I'll go ahead and do that myself. Just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist that way. But ultimately, uh, I reckon that's a wee bit more detail than you might require. Uh, let me see. So what do I want to do next? There's a couple of things I want to do. Uh, what if... Or create is a little bit mangled and a little bit um, dirty. We can add in some uh, dust and dirt. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a new layer. Just a plain layer. Actually, no, not a plain layer. I'll show you two ways of doing this. One, we're going to have a plain layer. And uh, we're, we're going to add color, height, roughness. Uh, we don't need metallic. Our base color, we're going to make this a sort of a, a light, dirty, dusty brown color. Something like that. And we're going to give it just a tiny bit of height, this time in the positive direction. So when height's negative, it'll go in the way. 
when it's positive it'll come out of the way and we just want a tiny little amount and uh, what this will do will be like kind of a wee bit of muck caked up on it uh, let me see so I also want my I want my roughness to be quite high actually if I put my roughness really low it'll be like really shiny wet muck so if I paint that on it'll be like kind of like shiny wet muck on the surface so depending on the weather of your game it's up to you what you want to do if I put the roughness quite high it'll not be as shiny but what I want to do I don't want to paint with a circular brush I'm going to scroll all the way up to my alpha shape and I can click in here and have a search and there are it takes a little bit long for these to load which is a pain but we have some uh, this one's a good one drip from the top is quite good uh, put that in there now it didn't place quite correctly unfortunately but you can see we can add a bit of dirt like that uh, I'm not too happy with that though maybe that's not what I want this time I just want a general dirt brush. Uh, is that kind of what I want? Brush paper dirty. Cracks? No. Oh, there's something. Uh, dirt brush. Dirt brush. And I can start painting that on. But what I want to do is just uh, change some of these attributes. Let me see, dynamic stroke, is that what I want? No. Here I want I want angle jitter. And I want my spacing up a wee bit, so I'll just space this out just a wee bit more. I'm just gonna put a couple of wee random clicks in there. I'm not gonna overdo it, just a couple of these placed randomly. And what you really want to do with this is change your uh, change your colors, change your depth, change your uh, your brush shape. So just go lay down a couple of these at any one time, and even I could just go down, change my color ever so slightly, maybe a bit more saturated, a bit more yellowy, just so it's not looking too repetitive. There's a couple of wee taps with that. Uh, let me see, what else could we do? Yeah, we'll change this uh, alpha shape here. There were some, uh, we've got the likes of this. Uh, there's a nice splashy brush. That's always a good one. Good old faithful splashy brush. Change the color again. Something we've got maybe a bit more ready this time. And that's us painting on like little stamps of. Uh, dirt and grime and stuff maybe just if this has been uh, cut it through the jungle or whatever happens uh, what we also could do is now how do I remember how to do this we can add a fill layer instead so we're going to call this uh, dirt splotches if I can spell that correctly and then we'll add a new layer, a new uh, fill layer on top. And we'll change the color of this to uh, maybe something, again, just a dirty grayish browny color. That'll do. Uh, our height, we'll put our height up just a tiny bit. Actually, no, this one will leave the height down very, very low. Uh, and the roughness, put the roughness up. But this will be more like a dusty kind of. Uh, a staining rather than like a muck on top so for that we would want we'll actually set the height back to zero just for that uh and let me see i want to add a mask now so i'm going to add a mask and add a black mask that'll hide everything and to this mask i want to add what's called a generator and a generator kind of automatically uh procedurally generates an effect for us and in this case uh, let's see, I want add generator. I want, I will have dirt. Do you have any other kind of dirt? Yeah, we'll just go dirt here. And you'll see that that, did I apply that to the right thing? Hang on, remove that effect. 
just make sure that your mask is the one selected. Add generator. And dirt. There we go. Let's add a bit of dirt there now. We turn that on and off. And you can see there's just a general kind of uh, stain. And the good thing with the, the dirt generator is it looks for all the kind of the corners and adds the dirt in there. So it gives a general griminess, a general grubbiness to the whole thing. There is another one that I know, I think called, uh, is it ground dirt? There we are, ground dirt. Uh, and what this will do is it'll add it to the bottom. So if I maybe duplicate this layer and get rid of the dirt generator and just drag that grab dirt onto it. There we go. And you can see there now it's just uh, focusing on the bottom and a lot of dirt and grain down there. Lovely. Now what we might want to do is just turn the amount of this down a bit, so it's 100 opacity. We can turn the opacity down just to make it a bit more of a subtle effect. Uh, okay, I think we've gone on long enough with this. Uh, we're up to God, 30 minutes now. Last wee thing I'll show you. What if, for example, you want to have your shipping company logo on here? Uh, easy peasy, sort of similar to what we were already doing. Uh, I'm going to call that um, fill layer ground dirt, just so we know what we're looking at there. Uh, I'm going to create a new, just a new plain layer. I will call this uh, logo. And you can go into Photoshop, make up your own logos and stuff like that. All I'm going to do is just have a wee look here and see what we have. Uh, this gear icon will do lovely. And I'm going to set this to a nice bright red. Turn it way up. Maybe something like that. I click over here. And we'll just put that right on top. Just stamp that. Although what I want to do is make sure there's no height on that. Just zero the height out. And roughness. Uh, put that at 0.5. And yeah, we can just stamp that on there. And you can see we get all of these. If we just play about with the alphas that we have, we might be able to find some other stuff. Uh, here we go. Here's we arrow. We could... Uh, let me see. How do I... Trying to remember how I rotate a brush. How do I rotate a brush? I can't for the life of me remember it, but down here we can change that brush. Is this going to be right? I'll keep going a bit more. There we are. So. Something like that, maybe change the color again. Uh, just uh, black this time, just so we know what way up that should be. Not quite right, but we'll leave it, it'll do rightly. Uh, so yeah, that is our create. I think that's looking quite good. Other wee thing we could do, uh, instead of painting color onto it, uh, what if I uncheck my color, uncheck my roughness, and I go back just to my Alpha and let me see. I, I just put in square here. Maybe do the job. This isn't exactly what I want, but um, if we get a really, really small brush, like minuscule brush, we can just start painting in wee cracks. Uh, say if I put my height down a wee bit, just say this wood is a bit cracked and chipped, it's been out in the rain. Um, and I would suggest using maybe a, a graphics tablet for this rather than a uh, rather than your mouse, and you can just start painting in wee chips and cracks. Now it's not looking very good there. Using the mouse, you're not getting the pressure sensitivity. Uh, maybe I need that brush a wee bit smaller again. But that is another option that you have. You can uh, add in a few wee chips and dings and things and make little score marks. And as I say, without the brush sensitivity, it's not looking too good. If you have a graphics tablet, that'll come out a lot better and it'll sort of taper off the edges, things like that. And you can have wee chips, say, 
on the corners and things like that looks quite well but I'm going to undo those with the mouse it's not great uh, but yeah that uh, I'm going to go off on my own now maybe detail this up a little bit and get myself happy with the textures but really that's all the techniques I want to show you uh, you can play about with the likes of these wee uh, stickers and decals and things and get them exactly how you like them uh, play about a bit more time with the dirt and be a bit more careful with it and maybe go back and paint in some of these plank details as well if you're so keen uh, but yeah we're going to leave it there last thing we want to do with this is actually export those textures out so we just go to first of all we'll go file and save make sure we actually save our file uh, where do we want to save this wooden create and it's just a substance painter file just call this wooden create and then we want to actually export those textures go to file export textures and we'll get this window and this is going to show you here in texture sets all the different textures that we're going to go out we've got our base color we've got our roughness or metallic or normal or height or emissive now emissive we haven't used metallic we haven't really used uh, the main ones we'll want here is base color roughness normal and height and we can uh, just spit those out um, up here we can select where it's actually going to go where we want to save those textures so we just choose where we want it to go and then we just hit the export button and that will spit out those textures for you that's all you have to do you can see there the size it's going to give you is 2048 uh, as we set initially uh, but that's it just hit export and that'll be your textures ready to bring into unreal uh, the original fbx the actual mesh itself can also just be brought into unreal so that's that that's a conclusion for this little tutorial series hope you enjoyed that hope you have some fun with it go off and uh play about with it just get it um spend a bit more time perfecting some of the dirt and things like that but i'm pretty pleased with that that turned out quite well uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and uh, thank you very much for watching and i'll see you for the next reset